Well, hello. For today's lesson, we are going to learn how to make our very own gift getting website. So this is what it looks like. It's gonna be pretty cool. Don't freak out about how cool this is, but this is our starter code. You're gonna be starting with this. And what we're gonna do is when we click this button, a gift should show up. And if I put in cat, a gift of a cat should show up. Pretty dope, right? Now, we want to make it so if any, the user types in any word, we should get a gift, back, a gift back for any word that they type in. And you might say to yourself, if you really think about this, like, whoa, does that mean we're going to have to find like millions of gifts to cover anything that a person says? Well, if you want to do this a hard way, you could look up all the gifts that you want and put them into your own database. Or if you want to do it the easy way, we could use the Giphy API to gain access to their database of gifts and just plug that into our application. So you might understand what a gate API is, but remember it's a go-between. So our program wants to access the Giphy database. Now Giphy of course doesn't want to give us like open access to their database, but they'll say, hey, we've created this API and through the API, we will give you access to gifts. You just have to know how to ask for them. And so in this lesson, we're gonna learn how do we ask for gifts from the Giphy API? And hopefully you can use that to, on not just the Giphy API, but for any other API that you might be interested in using. So let's get started. Now, the first thing to get started that we want to do is press the Get Started button. Now, when you press this, it will ask you to log in or to sign up. Now, I already have an account, so I'm just going to log in, and that's going to log me in. What you should do is pause this video, create a Giphy account, and log in, and then get to this screen. So pause the video and come back and meet me here. Once you've done that, what you're going to do is click create an app. We're going to select the API. We don't need the SDK. We're going to the next step. We're going to go like fun GIF app, app description, fun GIF app. I'm not an English person, obviously. I'm a coder. And then I press that and I create an app. And what that gives you back is this thing called an API key. Now this API key, you can think of it as either your identification like number or your password for using the API, the Giphy API. And really this just lets them know who it is. Once you've created this account and they give you an API key, that just says like, okay, whenever someone makes a request with this API key, we know this is Ben Siegel, right? Because that's his account and that's the API account. Uh, uh, what's it called? And it's important for them to track when they give access to a database because people could do bad things. Like you could shut down a server. If I made billions of requests to that server, uh, that could shut down their server because it can't handle all the requests. So they might say like, hey, listen, Ben Siegel's making a lot of requests with that API key, let's shut down his account. So that's why they make API keys, just to keep track of who's using their API and make sure they're not doing anything too crazy with it. Okay, now once we've done that, we're gonna click docs. Now, every API will have some documents that explain how to use it. We're gonna go over here where it says API Quick Start Guide, and this explains how to use their API. Now, just to be clear about some general things about APIs, you will have a URL that we call an endpoint. That endpoint is like the general uh, URL that you will use to request data. So this is the general URL. Now, obviously, this isn't enough. If you wanna request data from Giphy, you have to provide some extra information within that URL. The two things that are required um, are the API key, so they know who you are, and this thing called Q, which is the query. What are you querying, right? If you wanna search the Giphy URL, you should probably query something. We call these the request parameters, and they get attached to the URL, um, and that's what gets sent to the Giphy API, so they know what you're asking for. And then there's other things like limit, offset, rating, that you could like you want to request it in a certain language if you want them to be G or R or PG, how many do you want to request? Those are all things you can add to it, but they're not required. The two things that you need, the two parameters, are the API key and the string. And just to give you a quick example, Google does the same thing. If you type in cats here, you'll see that when I requested this, if you go look at the search bar, uh oh, something's on fire. Oops. This crazy thing, you'll see there is Q equals cats. I'm querying cats. Now there's so many other things that they include in this Google uh, request, but that's my query, cats. So that does get included. 
So how do we use this thing? Let's uh, let's show you. The first thing we want to do is go to endpoints and we're going to go to this API Explorer. This can make our life a little bit easier for using this API. And you'll see it has this request URL. Now the endpoint that we're using is search, all right? And I just want to be clear is that this is the basic API that you want to use, right? This is the endpoint. They've also added some other things. The next part of this URL is your API key. That's the key that I'm using. You always want to include that and in what we're going to query. All right. Now I just want you to take a look. This is the URL that will give us the data back. This is how we make requests to the query URL. Look at this queue because right up here, I'm going to say, what do I want to query? I want to query cats. You'll see that that queue becomes cats and now they'll know what I want to query. If I want to change the limit to how many gifts I get back, I can put 50 here. And if I want to change the rating to R, I could change the R and you'll see that that's part of the request. And those are all the requests that I'm making to the Giphy uh, API. So if I press send request, what that does is it sends a request and literally it comes back with data. That's what I'm requesting. Remember, when you go to google.com or you go to like whatever, Facebook or Instagram, when you make that request, you usually get back HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You get a website back. But that's not the only thing that could get sent back over the internet. You could also just get this thing called JSON data. And this data that you get back it's just information about some GIFs. It tells you the title, it tells you the rating, and what we're really looking for is it has these images. And like, it'll have the URL to an image that if you click that, that's, that's the GIF. All right, so we're doing search. Um, this for a second, put cats back in. Um, let's save this for a second, and we'll come back to this. Now let's look back at our website. Now, like I said, we've started off with something very simple. We have an input and a button, right? We have an input and a button, and we have a div that we'll put some information in later. Now this script is just a general template that you can use for a lot of API requests. We have a button, right, that we saved as a JavaScript variable, all right? We made an event listener that we attached to that button. And when we click that button, we're going to run this function called send a re API request, and that's where the match is going to happen. So right here is really where we're going to focus. And you can keep all this code for a lot of the um, APIs that we're going to be using in this unit. It'll pretty much be going off of this. So this is the main thing right here, this function called send API request. And really, it's this right here that we should be focusing on. We create a variable that says let response. This could have been anything. This could have been like cats, but we're saying let response. The variable name does not matter. But what matters here is that we're saying we're going to await this fetch. Now fetch is literally mean go fetch whatever URL I put into. So if you put in www.google.com, what it will do is fetch whatever, it's like going to www.google.com. So the same as typing it up here. If you were typing google.com, you are fetching it. All right. Now, what we're doing is we want to fetch something from the Giphy API. So when you want to get data from an API, this is where you put the URL. This is where you want to fetch it from. So, oh my, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Giphy, and literally we're just going to take all of this. Now, you could grab the whole thing. That's fine. Really, this is all we need. We just need right here up until cats. I don't need the limit. I don't need the offset. I don't need the rating. That's None of that's required. What we just need, remember, is the API key and the, what we're querying. So let's grab this and we're going to put it in fetch. So what this is saying is just I want you to go to the Giphy API. I want you to give them my API key and I want you to tell them that we're querying cats and tell me what data we get back. So we will console log what the response is, console.log, and let's see what the response we get back is. All right, and let's open our developer tools. And let's press click me and look, we got a response. That literally means we went over to the Giphy API and it gave us a response. And what the first thing we got back is we just said, hey, this is a status of 200. And status of 200 means you're good to go. You can get data from us. We're okay with you doing that. Okay. Now, you, maybe you've gone to websites before and it's like status 400. 400s are bad. That means we are not okay. There's nothing to send back to you. 200 means we can send something back to you. So once we've got the response, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get the JSON data from that response. So we're going to say let gifts equal response 
index.json. So we want some JSON data. So then we're going to say console.log gifs. All right. So that's the second step. We want the JSON data from that response. So now if we press click me, you'll see we get two things. Oops, I forgot one thing. You have to say await response. And we'll talk about those awaits in a second. So if I press click me, you'll see that once again, we get the response and we get data back. And look at that. And if you look back, what we have here is we've got it 25 GIFs in an array. Everything from zero to 24, right? Because we started zero. And in there, once again, we get the title and we get the images. And that's really what we want today. We really want these images. So that's great. That's really the key here. That's pretty exciting, right? We got back a response and Giphy literally opened up their database and said, you know what? We want you to have this. There you go, buddy. Thank you, Giphy. Now, once we get those, that data back, we want to do something with that. We want to use the API data. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pass that these GIFs into this function that says use API data. So we're going to say use API data. And we're going to pass it the GIFs. And in this function, we're going to, so remember, we're going to say we're passing GIFs into that function. So also put that here. And we're going to do something with the, this data. Now, what I'd like to do is I want one of these GIFs to show up on the screen. So like when I press something, I want it to actually show up. So right now, all I'm doing is I'm getting cats back. No matter what, this doesn't matter. Whatever the user writes, that's not getting back. But I am getting cats data back. I want to show that cat GIF to the user. The way we're going to do that is by adding it inside of the inner HTML of this wrapper div. So let's just go like this, document.query selector. Uh, let's see, hashtag wrapper, oops. And you remember, we want to add an image inside of it, so we're going to change the inner HTML. We're going to say equals, and here's where we're going to add our image. So what I'd like you to do right now is just do this, do back ticks, and we're just going to add an image with a source equals, we're going to just put empty thing, and we're going to close our image tag. Now inside of here is where we need the source for our image. Now remember, we got all this data back from the API. All we need to do is get one of those um, GIF URLs or GIF images and put it here in the source. So let's quickly do that. So if I press click me, let's look at the data we get back. So you get back all of this data. And inside the data, once again, you get the title, you get all this, but what we want is the images. And we go down to the images, and what we want is the original. These are all different ways that you get the big one, the small one, whatever, hit fix site. We just want the original. And the original, we want the URL. Now, we could go through this, but just to tell you what we want the data. Inside the data, we want the images. In, oh, sorry. Inside the data, we want the first thing in the array, so data zero. We want the images. And then we want the original, and then we want the URL for this original. Now you'll see here when I hover over it, it actually says like that path. It says data, zero, images, original URL. What you could do is just copy property path. And what you could do is say is this. We're going to interpolate. So we're going to say this, dollar sign, then the curly braces. And what we'll just say is this, gifs dot, and then control V. And that is the actual path. Now you see, it gives this weird double quotes. I don't know why it does that. Take away those double quotes. We just want it to be zero. And what this says is like, go to GIFs, go to the data, go to the zero, like the first thing in the, in the array, go to the images, go to the original image, and then get me the URL and put that in the image. And you'll see here, now when I press click me, cat shows up. Now if I change this to one, you'll see that a different cat shows up, right? This is the second thing in the index. I put two and so on and so forth. Now let's say I wanted to actually, instead of just taking in cats, I want to do the user input. Well, that's where it gets a little bit more interesting. I'm just going to show you the code because I'm running out of time. And this is just, I'm going to snap my fingers and it'll show up. Just added this, this gets the user input value. And then we're going to interpolate it instead of cats or just do this dollar sign and interpolate the user input. That's this variable. Okay, user input, and let's see if this works. So if I put in dog, click me, dog. If I put gosling, 
It works. Whatever. Okay, that's it.